origins of the elder Futhark runes. There are at least three main varieties of the runic script, early or common Germanic, Teutonic, which was used in Northern Europe before about 800 AD, Anglo-Saxon or Anglian, used in Britain from the 5th or 6th century to about the 12th century AD, and Nordic or Scandinavian used from the 8th century to about the 12th or 13th century. The three best known runic alphabets are the Elder Futhark around 100 to 800 AD, the Anglo-Saxon Futhork 400 to 1100 AD, and the younger Futhark 800 to 1100 AD. To give you a history of the original runes, known as the Elder Futhark, we'd have to go back in time to the southern parts of Norway and Sweden, and to the islands and northern peninsula of Denmark, also known as Jutland. In a major theory about Germanic origins, Indo-European speakers arrived on the plains of southern Sweden and Jutland, the center of the original home of the Germanic people prior to the Nordic Bronze Age, which began about 4,500 years ago. And with the Indo-Europeans came their basic principles of religion, a pantheon of gods and goddesses, each reigning over various aspects of mankind and the world around them. The gods were very human-like and subject to human emotions. It is believed these deities originated with the practice of ancestor worship. They also brought with them various means of divination prior to the use of the runes. They would interpret omens in the weather and nature, and they would cast groups of small objects like bones and interpret the way they landed. This, this method would later be used in the casting of the runes. Runes were originally used for religious purposes and not as a form of alphabet until later times. Meanwhile, Proto-Germanic was evolving from the Indo-European core language. Archaeology suggests that before their language differentiated into the individual Germanic branches, the Proto-Germanic speakers lived in southern Scandinavia and along the coast from the Netherlands in the west to the Vistula in the east around 700 BC. At an early date, there were also migrations toward the south and west at the expense of the Celtic people, who then inhabited much of western Germany. The Celtic Helvati, for example, who were confined by the Germanic people to the area that is now Switzerland in the first century BC, had once extended as far east as the main river. To this day, the Swiss refer to their country as Helvatia. Aside from having its German homeland actually being in Scandinavia, as a second irony, the Romans who coined the name Germani never identified exactly where these people lived, nor what language they spoke. They may not even have been what we know today as German. What we call Germany today was formed from a number of ununified tribes who were identified by the Romans, yet not one of those had been identified as the Germani. Returning to the runes, the Elder Futhark, also known as the Older Futhark, Old Futhark, or Germanic Futhark, is the oldest form of the runic alphabet. It was a written system used by Germanic people for Scandinavian and Northwest German dialects in the migration period. Inscriptions are found on artifacts including jewelry, amulet, plateware, tools, and weapons, as well as rune stones in Scandinavia from the 2nd to the 10th centuries. But these inscriptions are still used as protection spells and curses at this time. The script is based on Old Italic from Etruscan and Roman contact with the Germanic tribes using Germanic assigned names. It appears the full set of the Elder Futhark was not created spontaneously, but it grew over time. We are reminded of its religious origins early on as two of the runes refer to deities. The people writing the runes themselves believed in the divine origin of these ancient signs. It is believed in Norse legends 
that runes had never been invented, but are eternal and existing forces. The god Odin pierced his heart with the sphere and hung nine days and nights on the world tree, Yggdrasil, to understand the meaning of the runes. This was not the first time Odin had to make a sacrifice to gain magical knowledge. Always seeking to learn more, Odin desired to drink from the well of Mimisburr, the well of Mimir. It was also called the well of knowledge. Eventually, Mimir granted this wish, but told Odin that a sacrifice had to be given to earn such knowledge. Shockingly, Odin pulled out one of his own eyes and threw it into the well. His sacrifice accepted, he was allowed to take a drink and absorb its secrets. From that day on, Odin was missing an eye. A commonly used name for him was Hoar, one-eyed. There is also detailed folklore stating that the tree from which Odin hung himself must be Yggdrasil, the world tree at the center of the Germanic universe, with nine worlds in its branches and roots. Right under the tree of the world is the Udavel, which is an incredible source of wisdom. The rune body seems to have had its original residence in these waters. In a Nordic religion, the runes are symbolic for the well of Erd, the source of destiny, and the Norns use these runes to transport fate to the trunks and branches of Yggdrasil and extend to nine worlds amongst the branches. Odin, who went by many names, paid great pain and adventure for himself because he knew that the runes conveyed deep meanings, and if he could understand their meanings, he would gain deep wisdom and strength. Now the following is called an, or an ancient ode to Odin, and in it it names multiple different names for the god Odin, but I'll read you just an excerpt from it. Here we hail Odin, god of wisdom, of death, and of war. We gather here to honor you, adore you, venerate you. God of many names and faces, we honor you with this offering of mead. We honor Runatir, God of the Runes, you who sacrificed yourself to bring the runes up from the well. You gave us the means to communicate, the knowledge to read written words. But now presumably then, after Odin discovered the runes by sacrificing himself and staring at the waters of the Undajing while fasting for nine days, it was he who gave the runes to the first human rune masters. His peregrine sacrifice was likely to be symbolically imitated at the initiation ceremonies where the candidate ideally learned the Norse runes. If Odin is the first and always the highest magician, then we will realize that no matter how new it is now, these runes will fall under his control. New and particularly effective tools for magic works, by definition, will become an integral part of his work. Odin could have been a strong supporter of this secret and secret knowledge. Therefore, we see from this story how the Norse saw runes not only as letters, but also had a metaphysical and even magical essence. Because of their inherent meaning, they can be used as a mean of communication between nature and the supernatural, and therefore as a magic weapon for protection or success. But okay, we've covered uh, the runes being invented by the god Odin in mythology, but who really invented the runes? A likely theory is that the runic alphabet was developed by the Goths, a Germanic people from the Etruscan alphabet of northern Italy, was perhaps also influenced by the Latin alphabet in the 1st or 2nd century BC. Carved on any object, runes can be cast and decrypted to discern the present or predict the future. Runes are usually not carved on craft paper or parchment paper, but are carved on wood, bones, or stones. Although there is evidence that most Scandinavians could read runes, at least at a basic level for them, the true research and understanding of these signs were suitable for the pursuit of the gods. Since at least the first century, Norse and other Germanic people have written in runes. In fact, runes were to become very important inscriptions. 
They could be carved onto rune stones to commemorate ancestors and mark the hero's grave. The typically Scandinavian rune stones began to show the transition to the younger Futhark, the elder Futhark's successor from the 6th century. In the early 9th century, both the older and the younger Futhark were known and used. The longest known inscription in the elder Futhark and one of the youngest consists of 200 characters and is found on the early 8th century Egyum stone and may even contain a stanza of Old Norse poetry. The oldest inscription of the British Isles dates to 400 AD, the very end of Roman Britain. The oldest inscriptions before 500 AD found on the European continent are divided into two groups, the area of the North Sea coast and northern Germany, including parts of the Netherlands, associated with the Saxons and Frisians on one hand, and loosely scattered finds from along the Oder to southeastern Poland, as far as the Carpathian Mountains, associated with East Germanic people. The latter group disappears during the 5th century, the time of contact of the Goths with the Roman Empire and their conversion to Christianity. In this early period, there is no specifically West Germanic runic tradition. This changes from the early 6th century and for about one century, from about 520 to 620 AD, an Alemannic runic province emerges with examples on fibulae, weapons parts, and belt buckles. As in the East Germanic case, use of the runes subsides with Christianization in the case of the Al Alemanni in the course of the 7th century. Elder Futhar inscriptions were rare, with very few active literae in relationship to the total population at any time, so that the knowledge of the runes was probably an actual secret throughout the migration period. The word runes main meaning is secret or mystery, which is the mysterious power of the phenomenon itself. The runes can promote communication between humans and the invisible forces that give life to the visible world, thereby providing a foundation for many magical behaviors. Therefore, Norse runes are not only a means of promoting communication between two or more human beings, they are intrinsically meaningful symbols that can be read and understood by at least some non-humans. It is against this ideological background that we should notice that the numerical epicenter of the Elder Fusar inscriptions are the Angle and Herulis area of Denmark, where the Neolithic funnel beaker culture survived the longest and where Tacitus tells us Mother Nature worship was still norm in his day. This is possibly visible in the latter documented division into three Atir, Freyr, Hagel, and Tyr. Tyr often looking much like a sun god. These two are not so isolated cultures, but pivotal in the amber distribution aspect of the maritime exchange network. The runic letters Futharks, or Futhorks, based on the first six letters of the elder Futhark, roughly corresponds to our letters F, U, TH, A, R, and K. They appeared on the Kilver Stone in Gotland, Sweden, and the date can be traced back to the beginning of the migration area, about 400 AD. As Norse spread across Europe, the form and meaning of many runes changed, resulting in new letter forms. For example, the Futhorks of the Anglo-Saxons contained 33 Norse runes. There were other variants of runes, including Turkish and Hungarian runes, Scandinavian Futhark, and Etruscan and Greek letters and Egyptian hieroglyphics. Just like reading tarot cards, rune projection should be regarded as a guiding tool, work with the subconscious mind and focus on the problems that may exist in the mind. Some people think that the choices made by the Norse runes drawn are not completely random, but the choices made by your subconscious mind. 
Others believe that this is the answer provided by God to confirm everything we already know in our hearts. There are 24 elder Futhark rooms. Younger Futhark only has 16 rooms, not because the language is getting simpler, because it is getting more complicated. Phonologically, the younger Futhark's rooms are working double to cover the changes that make the tongue of the Nordic different from that of the other Germans. The young Futhark can be divided into various styles, including Norse runes for long branches, which is in Denmark, and short branches, which is in Sweden and Norway. The proliferation of trade and interaction brought about by the Viking era and the increasing demand for writing and literacy skills have led archaeologists to classify thousands of inscriptions in the younger Futhark, while there are only hundreds of inscriptions in the elder Futhark. Although the prophets and priestess still use Norse runes to perceive the trajectory of the universe, we found many rune inscriptions related to law or trade, or just a man or woman carving their names on personal items. You can certainly buy pre-made runes, but based on the experience of many Norse magicians, there is a tradition of making or changing your runes. Strictly speaking, this is not necessary, but for some people it may be for a magic point of view. According to Tacitus in his Germanic language, the runes should be made from the wood of any nut tree, including oak, hazel, and perhaps pine or cedar. It is also a common practice to dye Norse runes into the red to symbolize blood. According to Roman author Tacitus, the challenge to the Norse runes was to pour the runes on a white linen cloth and then put them away while gazing at the heavens above. By the Viking Age, roughly 793 to 1066, the elder Futhark gradually gave way to the younger Futhark. Now I will cover the individual 24 elder Futhark runes and their meanings and translations in a future video.